Hey, good morning, everybody. Here we are, Friday. What a wonderful opportunity. We got to get our day kicked off right with God's Word. This morning, I want to look um, again in Jeremiah chapter 7. We looked at that yesterday for a little bit. Um, and I want to drop down to verse 23 and a few verses right in here because um, there's a very important lesson, and it's something that we still need to learn. You know, um, even in our day and time and the things that comes to God. Jeremiah 7 and verse 23 says, But this is what I commanded them, saying, This would be the people of old that come out of Egypt. Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Now notice some things in this one verse. There's something that I've got to do in order for, for God to be my God. He says, I've got to obey his voice. And there's something I have to do in order to be his people. I have to obey his voice. See, this is condition, ha, having this relationship or this fellowship with God is absolutely conditional. And the condition is based on me. Notice what he says again. In order for me to have God, I have to obey him. Or in order for me to be part of his people, I have to obey him. And for I me mean, to have both of those things, I also have to do, in verse 23, I have to walk in all the way, not some of them, not the ones I like, not the ones that my, that my preacher might push on me, but he says, all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But what we have in the religious world today is this mindset is that, you know, whatever floats with me, well, God's going to be good with that. Let me enlighten you on something with that. God has never been like that. He's never. We go back to the garden. Eve ate of the fruit that was the, uh, of the forbidden fruit. The Bible tells us that she, when she saw that the fruit was appealing to the eyes and good for fruit, uh, for food and to make one wise, she was rolling on her own heart. Now, was God good with that? No, because he told her, don't do that. And that principle is true throughout the Bible with God's people. When God says something, that's it. I have to obey that, not add to it, not take away from it, not adjust it, not tweak it in any way. And if I do exactly what God says, then I can have him and I can be his people and it will go well. It means everything will be all right with God. He goes on verse 24. Yet they did not, they did not obey or incline their ear. So they didn't, but what did they do? But follow the counsels and dictates of their evil hearts and went backward and not forward. You know, we, have, we hear this uh, stuff you know, uh, today, just follow your heart. Whatever you feel in your heart, if it's right in your heart, then it is right with God. But what do we read here? What do we read from the book of God? Man says, do what's in your heart. God says they did not obey his voice, but did what was in their heart. Hmm. Which would be right? Which one should we do? Should we follow our heart? Or should we obey God's word? It looks like God's word is telling us we need to obey God's word. Verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt, until this day, I have even sent to you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up and early sending them. So what this is telling us right here is that what they were doing, they were following their heart. God was not pleased with that. So he was sending the prophets to tell look, God's not happy with that. You're doing the opposite of what God said. Remember, he said, if you'll obey my voice, I'll be your God and you shall be my people. The only way I can have God is if I obey him. Not my heart, not what's in my heart, not what I think God wants in my heart, but what I can turn to the pages of God's word and read. They weren't doing that. They were rolling with what they wanted to roll with. So God sent the prophets to teach them, instruct them. You need to stop following your heart and you need to start listening and inclining your ear and begin to obey God. Verse 26, 
Yet they did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffen their neck. They did worse than their fathers. We have this so rampant in the religious world today. Is that it's sad, but so many do not really want to listen to what God's word says. They want to do what they feel is right in their heart. God said, don't do that. Don't go with what you feel in your heart. We need to stick with what God's word says. And so it goes on, verse 27, Therefore you shall speak all the word, these words to them, but they are not going to listen to you. Why? Why do people not really listen to the Bible today? Because they're listening to their heart. In other words, they're rolling with what they want to be true. But notice this powerful example that we have back in Jeremiah chapter 7. That's not going to roll. God's not going to accept it. I can't have him and I cannot be his people if I'm going to roll through my religious life with what's in my heart. I have to do what God says in his word. Not some of what he commanded, but all of what he commanded. And that's going to depend on what dispensation that we lived in under the Old Testament dispensation or under the gospel age dispensation. That's us. That's the New Testament. That's our boundaries. That's our blueprint. That's our guide. And so we find here with God sending the prophets rising up early, they were, God was not pleased with what they were doing based on the dictates of their evil heart. It was evil because they were doing what they wanted to do pertaining to God. We have the same struggle. We have the same issues today. That's why it's so very important that we get in our Bibles and we're honest with ourselves and we study and we rightly divide. And so much of this stuff that's out there is just been handed down and so people you know, just believe what it says. And then when they do go to the Bible, so many times they, 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 they read the Bible and study it to confirm what they already believe. And it's going to be very difficult in order to see the truth. I think a good rule... For your Bible study, and I use it all the time, is that uh, it, it is we need to study the Bible to let it make up our mind, and not to study it with our mind already made up. That's a good principle for for Bible study, and let us not be like these people. Let us not just roll with what's in our heart. We see in our text, God's not going, but God doesn't accept that. He didn't accept it under a covenant that was enacted by the blood of bulls and goats, so how much more will he not accept that under a covenant that's been ratified by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ? The Hebrew writer tells us such things. And so I'm going to leave you with that. There's your dose of God's word. Think about these things. Go back again. Again, Jeremiah chapter 7. It's a great chapter. So many uh, timeless uh, principles and teachings that's contained uh, within that. And so let us not live our spiritual lives dictated by our hearts, but let it be dictated by the Word of God. And let us be humble enough to see the things that are true and humble enough to change. Hey, hope you have a great day. Lord willing, we'll get back tomorrow, or well, no, Monday, and get us another dose of God's Word. We'll see you then.